Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a book review on The Midgard Trilogy by Susan Crenard. So before I do head into my my thoughts and feelings on the Midgard trilogy by Susan Crenard, um, this is just going to be an overview of the trilogy. I'm not going to sit and put any massive spoilers in here or anything. It's just going to be an overview of the things I liked, the things I disliked, and whether or not it's worth your time to pick up this trilogy. So let's get going. So, what do you need to know about the Midgard Trilogy by Susan Crenard? Uh, uh, the first book is called Mist, and then the second book is called Black Ice, and the third book is called Battlestorm. And these three books, they take place in modern San Francisco, and they follow a young woman named Mist. The thing about Mist, though, is that even though she looks like a young woman in her 20s, she's actually very ancient. She's like thousands of years old, if you will. And she's actually a Valkyrie from Norse mythology. Uh, the role of the Valkyrie in Norse mythology, um, they, they, were, they were lady warriors and they would help escorts uh, uh, people who would die during battle and they would escort them to Valhalla, which is like the Norse equivalent of, of heaven or something like that. So yeah, Mist, she's thousands of years old, she's a former Valkyrie, she's living in modern day San Francisco, and she's she's trying to just live a very normal, basic, simple life. Um, she's kind of detached herself from her former past and whatnot. Yeah, she's, she lives in a, in a nice little apartment area, she has two cats, she has a boyfriend, uh, but of course things things don't go normally for Mist. Of course all hell has to break loose at some point in Mist's life. And um, she, she comes to find out that the guy who she thought was her boyfriend, she comes to find out that he's actually the, the, the Norse god of mischief, Loki. Yeah, guys, how awesome is that? What a great twist. So, um, what Mist com comes to find out is that Loki, of course, since he is the god of mischief, he's here on Midgard. Midgard also being just another name for Earth. Um, Loki is here on Midgard. He's trying to cause chaos as usual, and he's he's trying to you know get his own sort of power and influence and. Uh, he's specifically looking for the treasures of Odin, um, certain magical items that belong to Odin and various other gods of North, Norse mythology. Um, so yeah, that, that would include Odin's uh, eight-legged horse uh, Slipnir, I think is how it's pronounced. Um, that would include something like Thor's hammer Mjolnir. That would include something like um, Freya's uh, magical cloak. I think it's called like the Falcon Cloak or something. But yeah, there's a ton of these magical items that Loki is after. And um, all of these various different treasures are in the possession of other Valkyrie. But all the Valkyrie are kind of scattered throughout the world in various different places. They're, they're in hiding, protecting these magical treasures that used to belong to the other gods. Um, so, so yeah, it, it's kind of this race against the clock between Mist and Loki as they're trying to hunt down all these treasures and, you know, who can get the most and, and whatnot. Because whoever has all these treasures ultimately kind of wins the battle at the end of the day if you will. So yeah, that's that's kind of the basic overview of the Mist or sorry, the Midgard trilogy. So 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 yeah, how would I recommend this book? I guess if if you like Norse mythology, you know, uh, if you if you like all things Norse mythology, especially maybe something in a modern day uh, setting um, with the gods and goddesses kind of running around. And not only do some of the gods and goddesses make appearances in this series, but um, some other creatures 
um, like um, the frost giants pop up. They're big enemies that are in league with Loki. And there's also another main character in this trilogy. His name is Dane, and he is an elf. And he has his own dramatic, angsty backstory, you guys. Out of every character in this series, Dane is the most dramatic and most angsty. <laughs> He has his own personal demons that he's dealing with, his own deep dark backstory, things that he's hiding from, from Mist, and yet he himself has a, a past relationship with Loki and whatnot that's very interesting just all over the place at times. So the things that I particularly liked about this series, the things that I found enjoyable, I did enjoy the fact that this was Norse mythology in a modern day setting, and you know, kind of modernizing certain elements. How would certain things from Norse mythology work in a modern setting? How would these gods and goddesses and creatures and monsters, how would they work and function in a modern society? Um, so I liked that element because I do. I love Norse mythology. Um, I think a drawback though, if you're not very familiar with Norse mythology, some elements of this series could be very complicated to you, could be very confusing, because Susan Crenard, she doesn't give a lot of information. She does kind of dive right into things, just right on in there, and kind of gives a very brief, quick explanation about something, whether that be an object or a person, you know. She kind of just dives headlong in there, and it can be a little overwhelming and confusing on occasion, uh, especially if you don't have very much experience with Norse mythology. Fortunately for me, I have read several different editions of something like the Prose Edda. The Prose Edda is a big com a big compilation of Norse mythology. So I've, I've read various different versions of the Prose Edda, which I think helped me get into this series and understand some elements. Um, uh, yeah, if you're a fan of, of, like, the Marvel comics with Thor and Loki from the Marvel comics or through the Marvel movies, that's not going to help you very much. <laughs> because, yeah, Norse mythology versus the Marvel versions of, like, Thor and Loki, those are two wildly separate things, yeah, guys. Um, I, I mean, yeah, Loki, especially Loki, Loki, how Loki is portrayed in the movies, for instance, um, I mean, he, I think he is kind of similar to that in this book series, <laughs> the way his personality is and his sense of humor and whatnot, uh, how he is in those movies is kind of similar to this series, so that might kind of help you out a bit. But but yeah, Susan Crenard is primarily focusing on Norse mythology um, very, very strongly and heavily more than anything, so that could be a drawback for you. But yeah, like I said, the things I enjoyed about this series, I liked the, the Norse mythology. Um, I did really enjoy all of the characters. Um, the characters could get a little frustrated and irritating on occasion because it does. It, it gets to some very angsty places on occasion and people's pasts and their relationships can get a little overwhelming and confusing but for the most part I loved the characters. Um, sometimes they could be a little inconsistent in their in their attitudes and their behaviors but overall I liked the characters. I found them all likable, including the villains. <laughs> uh, I did. I, I especially really enjoyed Mist as the protagonist of this series. She's she's very strong, independent. She's a fighter. She kind of comes naturally into leadership, even though she doesn't want leadership. Um, I did. I liked the character of Dane, the elf. I know I mentioned earlier Dane is very, very angsty, but I did. I love Dane because uh, he's he's the type of character that. Um, he's just very dry with his attitude and his humor, and uh, it takes a lot to to humor him. <laughs> but he's always very serious and angsty, but I love Dane. Um, I also love Loki in this, obviously. I initially just picked up this trilogy because I like the character of Loki in general, whether that be through Norse mythology or, yeah, through the Marvel movies, because I do love Tom Hiddleston's portrayal of Loki, you guys, and that's who... And yes, I did have Tom Hiddleston picture the entire time I was reading this series. <laughs> I'm not ashamed. Um, so yeah, I like the characters for the most part. I do feel like there were too many characters, though, just way too many characters that sometimes never served a function to me anyway, but I, I guess I can talk about that more in my negatives. And yeah, more than anything, this trilogy is just fun, you know? Um, you, you can't take it seriously. Uh, it's urban fantasy. It, it's a little silly and over the top on occasion. 
it sometimes don't make a hell of a lot of sense. But at the end of the day, the series is just fun and enjoyable. You know, it's it's just it's laid back. You know, um, you can just chill with it. It's nothing you have to overly think about. Um, you can just enjoy it for what it is. It's not a piece of serious literature, you know. Um, so yeah, that's all of my positives. As far as my negatives go, um, I've probably kind of mentioned some of my negatives kind of throughout some of this. But yeah, as far as negatives go, like I said, I mentioned just too many characters. That was a huge problem with me with this trilogy. It's like you have your initial main characters like Mist, Dane, and Loki. And then the series introduces so many other characters and a lot of these characters I found myself going what is their purpose what is their function because yeah I, f I finished the third book in in the series the final book and I was just kind of reevaluating certain things and I was like what was the point of this character what was the point of this character so many characters could have just been written off a lot of characters were just vastly unneeded some characters were there for just pure convenience um because they're especially there's like a there's one character she's a healer and her story just never went anywhere to me it seemed like she was there just purely for convenience so that way if anyone was near death or if anybody was injured she was just solely there to heal people you know what i mean she was there for pure convenience rather than her being her own fully fleshed out character and the same goes for this other character he's a like a prophet and he felt like he was there purely for convenience because he was there to like foretell the future whether he would tell people that or hold it back so yeah but it's like what was his point and function you know and yes yeah, so many characters were like that it's like even though i liked a lot of the the random characters it's like Many of them felt unnecessarily, they didn't serve any greater function, and it's kind of a shame, you know? Um, it's like, I don't know what Susan Crenard was thinking. It's like, it's like she wanted to throw out as much Norse mythology as she could, you know, so many d various different people and associated with Norse mythology, and the thing is, it was, it was overwhelming and it was too much, and it took away from the story at times. And as far as, like, the overall arching plot through all three books, um, it did reach a point that a lot of the plot felt very convoluted um, and, and kind of like, uh, well, what does this serve? <laughs> you know, what is the point of this? Why, why overly complicate an, over, an, an already overly complicated story, you know? Um, so, so, yeah, that was a big negative for me is that it just it certain things would transpire and it would just kind of get progressively worse and worse and worse and i don't know and then and then yeah it would just add more and more to my confusion you know i had like a growing list of confusion throughout the series just like like you would learn one thing about a character but then in the next book you would learn something else that would totally take away from what you just learned about that character if that makes sense just so many back steps like Susan Crinard she had she had an idea of what she wanted to do with a character but then she would like be like no 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 wait I want to do this now with the character and she would just kind of erase what she kind of set up originally or something I don't know it was just very confusing with the characters and then yeah with the plot as well it, it almost felt like she didn't have a, a framework you know it felt like she didn't really have a framework what she was doing she was just kind of writing what she felt like writing and I hate to say that I hate to say that about an author because I, I I don't know you know I don't know what they're writing I don't know what her writing process and style is like you know how she writes a story but it, to me that's what it felt like like the story was just being written from beginning to end and whatever she felt like throwing in she felt like throwing in you know so overall the Midgard trilogy uh, I did enjoy it for what it was. It was likable. It's a series that I started many, many years ago, and I just now got around to finally finishing. I'm glad that I'm finished with it. Will I ever read it again? Probably not, to be quite honest. I think reading it one time was good enough for me. Um, and yeah, I think, uh, I think the whole series, a solid three out of five stars for the whole entire series. And uh, yeah, you'll either love it, or hate it, I, th I, I definitely suggest reading a lot of other uh, reviews on Goodreads because there are. There's the people who love the series and the people who just really hate it. <laughs> 
So, you guys, that is it for my review of the Midgard Trilogy by Susan Crinard. In the comments below, have you guys read this trilogy? Do you plan on reading it? Uh, I swear, I feel like I'm one of the few people who have read this trilogy because even on Goodreads, there's not very many reviews for the trilogy to begin with. <laughs> I don't know what that says. Uh, so, so yeah, you guys, let me know your thoughts about uh, this trilogy if you have read it. How do you feel about Norse mythology retellings? Do you love that sort of thing? Just let me know. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye, guys.